Hey! Welcome back to my channel. So I'm excited today because I'm going to be sharing with you um, some of the kind of like a little bit of the process of how I got into this milk bank that I'm doing and just kind of what it's all about. Some of this, some of the stuff I actually can't really share with you. They, they are a little bit private with uh, some of their kind of branches, but um, I'm going to be giving you as much information as possible. And I hope that if you are exclusively pumping um, or breastfeeding and pumping, whatever, and maybe if you have an oversupply, if you're interested in donating, like this could bring kind of awareness to that. Um, yeah, so I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if you're not subscribed, please subscribe. Um, and if you're new, welcome. My name is Kim. I was a gestational carrier and delivered in April, and now I'm exclusively pumping for the Milk Bank um, Prolactin Bioscience. I think I'm saying that right. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, so I have a mom channel, and uh, yeah, so today I just wanted to share with you kind of all about the Milk Bank. So let me just stop rambling. It's like the first thing uh, about the milk bank is it's called um, prolactin bioscience and it is uh, in California. Um, you can actually tour the facility. I wish that I could tour it because I've heard that the tours are really interesting and fun but I'm actually like all the way on the other side of the US so um, not really not really worth it for me so the company is called prolacta bioscience advancing the science of human milk if i'm looking down it's because i have their website open so i'm just gonna like read off a couple of like points but this is kind of like what their website looks like um they sort of have like a purple theme which spoke to me um but they i think are yeah so they are in North America, Asia, and Europe, which I totally didn't know. So that's like really cool. But the one that I am uh, going through is based out of California. And they only give milk to NICU babies. So that means babies who are in the neuronatal intensive care unit. And uh, they specifically need breast milk um, in order to keep them going. And... Um, scientifically, it is proven that breast milk is better than formula, so, um, you know, the donors are doing this really great deed, donating all this really special milk to these really special babies. Not that any baby, like, isn't special, but these NICU babies are, you know, in a special circumstance where they really need this milk because um, they were born at, like, 24 weeks, uh, you know 30 weeks gestation so they really need that extra help and the breast milk can totally help them get there so this also is a private company it says as a privately held for profit and scientifically driven company committed to improving premature infant nutrition we are using human milk to change the standard care of the NICU mothers who have a surplus of breast milk can help save the country's uh, most fragile infants by donating their extra milk through Prolacta's affiliate milk banks. So Prolacta's like, oops, sorry, Prolacta's like this big company and then they branch off and have like three or four other milk banks that you can donate to. Okay, so on their website they have two milk banks that you can donate to that are available through their website. They do have a couple word of mouth donation companies. Um, I'm not really going to mention them because they are sort of word of mouth and I don't really want to put them out there because they don't really advertise um, these as well. So if you know them through the group, through the grapevine, you would know of them. Um, if you are kind of interested in one of them, there is one that's specifically for surrogates, but um, I am not going to mention that one on here because it is kind of more word of mouth and sort of like a private um, donation company, if that makes sense. It's a little bit of a gray area there, um, but if you are interested, if you are a surrogate and you do want to donate milk um, after you deliver the baby, please like get in touch with me and I will send you um, their information. I just don't want to put it out here, um, if that makes sense. So hopefully we can be respectful of that. Um, but the ones on their website are called Helping Hands Milk Bank and Tiny Treasures Milk Bank. Now, Helping Hands milk bank makes your donation go twice as far. Your donated milk will be used to make your potentially life-saving human milk 
based nutritional products for premature infants in the NICU. Wow, that's like a run on sentence. Um, it says for every dollar, so a dollar for every ounce of qualified milk collected through Helping Hands Milk Bank with a guaranteed minimum donation of $25,000, Helping Hands Milk Bank is operated by, by Prolacta and as such, Prolacta is responsible for donor recruiting, donor qualification, milk collection, and testing. So Helping Hands doesn't actually compensate you per ounce, um, but they do donate a dollar um, to this special fund, Susan G. Uh, Komen, I think is what it is. Um, you can look it up a little bit more on their website, but I've heard really good things about them and that their donation process is pretty much the same as Prolacta, and I will go over the donation process in a moment too in this video. So the next one, Tiny Tiny Treasures Milk Bank, that's a really good one. I've heard of that one a lot more than the um, Helping Hands one. That one does actually compensate you a dollar per ounce um, for your time and effort. It says, Tiny Treasures Milk Bank, breast milk is best for all babies, but premature babies have increased nutritional needs that cannot be met by mothers own milk alone. Um, by donating to Tiny Treasures Milk Bank, your excess breast milk will allow very low birth weight premature babies um, the opportunity to benefit from a 100% human milk diet. Um, for every qualified ounce of milk you donate, you'll be compensated a dollar for your time. And then it shows you like how to apply and like kind of their contact information. So those are like the two milk banks uh, that Prolactin, Prolacta, Bioscience um, is affiliated with. So there are a couple of other ones. As I said, those are word of mouth, um, but those are the ones that are openly available to donate for anybody to donate to. Let's go into how to become qualified to donate to a milk bank and what you actually have to kind of do. So the first thing you want to do is make sure that you actually have an oversupply that you can give away. Or if you're a surrogate, make sure that your intended parents do not want the milk. It is really hard to find um, local people to kind of take your milk. Most of the time people want it for free, um, but if you are looking for compensation, a milk bank is usually easier to kind of get into that route. Um, or if you're looking to just donate the milk for free, that's completely fine as well. Um, just note that some people do like, um, they'll give their milk for free and then people will um, compensate bags or pump parts. It's whatever you're comfortable with, either way is fine. For me, I really wanted to be compensated for my time because a lot of time gets spent sitting at the pump, cleaning and sanitizing everything and it, you take a lot of time out of your day. I probably spend like four hours a day pumping, like combined. So it's, it's a lot and sometimes it's more and sometimes it's less too. So that was just my route. I think it's completely fine. I have donated milk. Um, for free, but I think that comp asking for compensation for milk is not a bad thing at all and you shouldn't feel ashamed to ask for compensation for that. I'm just going to go through the bullet points on what you actually have to be to in order to apply to the Prolacta milk banks. So it says, if the following apply, if you are generally healthy, do not take, do not take any medications on a regular basis, your baby is doing well, you do not smoke, and your home freezer reaches the approximate temperature. Um, then you can apply to qualify as a donor. If the following apply, um, you have a major illness in the last 12 months, you still have, you have a heart disease or high blood pressure, you have vaccinations or shots in the last 12 months, you've had major surgery in the last 12 months, you've taken certain medications in the past one to three years, you've taken any medications, birth control, thyroid for longer than two weeks, you've been tested positive for tuberculosis, you have a, um, a recent significant weight loss, you drink caffeinated beverages or alcohol in moderation, you receive blood or blood products longer than 12 months ago, you've taken any herbal teas or supplements for longer than two weeks. You might still qualify if those um, pertain. If the following pertain, um, you do not qualify. You have HIV, you're diabetic requiring insulin, you have received um, some human growth hormone, you have a family history of mad cow disease, um, you've injected illegal drugs, don't do that, you've ever had an intimate contact with anybody who's had HIV or HTLV, 
or um, hepatitis, you smoke or use tobacco, your baby is breastfed and not gaining weight, you've been in the UK for three months or more um, from 1980 to 1996, or you've been in Europe for five years or more um, from 1980 to present, you would not qualify at that point. Um, so their qualification process is a little bit lengthy, um, but that is mainly because you are feeding NICU babies, so they want you to be absolutely as healthy as possible. So that makes sense. So once you've actually contacted them and they say that it's kind of good to go, the process really starts um, moving quite quickly from there. They usually ask you how much milk you have, if you want to do um, like a month to month donation, or if you want to just do like a big kind of chunk of donation and then not donate anymore. Um, so what they usually do is they test your freezer temperature, they do a blood test and a DNA swab, and that's all to make sure that you don't have any weird anomalies or you don't have an STI or, you know, some type of weird disease because you are feeding NICU babies, everything needs to be healthy. Like, there's also a really big questionnaire that you have to go through just asking about your breastfeeding journey, your baby, um, kind of like, you know, what your day-to-day -day life is and is this something that would fit well into your life? And then they go into the very lengthy process of telling you how to clean and sanitize your pump parts, which is very, very detailed and um, lengthy, like I said. Their cleaning process is pretty intense. Um, I'm not gonna go too much into it, but um, it is pretty lengthy, but once you really get the hang of it, it does fit really well into your routine. Um, I do have to say the learning curve is pretty steep, but once you kind of get the hang of it, and they do have a really good support system, um, I was able to get it uh, down pat in about like three to four weeks, which does seem long, but once, you know, you kind of see what they're asking, like you will sort of understand like, okay, like it does take a little while to kind of get into the groove of things. Um, so yeah, so it probably took me about like three to four weeks to get like fully qualified and fully um, confident in my pumping routine for this milk bank. So now I want to talk a little bit about the compensation and how that kind of works. So I, you are compensated for your milk. Uh, usually it's a dollar an ounce. Um, this is not taxed, so you do need to take that into consideration. You are contracted with this milk bank, so um, you do, you know, have like a set timeline that you have to actually pump for them. I think it's four months, and then after that, it's a month to month basis if you wanna keep going um, up to, I don't think that there's actually like a um, restriction on how long you can uh, donate to them. And I've heard people do it for like two years or a year. Um, I would love to do it for a year, but you know, we'll see. I'm coming up to four months, so we'll see. But essentially you need to make sure that all the milk that you send in, in the big coolers, which I've been posting a lot of coolers on my social media and I do wanna do a video on me packing it because it's a pretty intense process as well. Um, your coolers need to pass their um, testing. So that means that they test all of your milk to see if it's been contaminated with a certain bacteria. Okay, my son just interrupted me. So your milk does need to go through an extensive process to make sure that there's no bacteria. And if there is bacteria found, your cooler will not pass. So essentially, um, in order to get compensated, you want all of your coolers to pass contamination. And so that's why you do the really strict um, cleaning and sanitizing routine. Um, I hope that that all makes sense. It is a little bit of a hit or miss and it can be kind of upsetting, so definitely keep that in mind. Um, it is definitely stressful waiting for that first uh, cooler to pass and really any cooler. Um, I just sent in two more coolers and I'm gonna be sending in two more next week that I definitely wanna film for you guys. Um, and it's a little stressful because you're waiting and you're hoping that they pass and if they don't like you know that milk kind of goes to waste where it could like go to another um, family or baby but it is what it is um, it's just something to take in consideration 
Uh, you're way more likely to have it pass if you just follow their directions and rules with the sanitation. That's it for today's video, guys. I hope this was informative. If you have any questions, please comment below. And if you are interested in this milk bank, definitely check them out. They do have a really great website. I'll have everything linked down below. Um, and as I said, uh, the word of mouth banks, if you are interested in that, please uh, try to reach out to me personally. Um, I do have my email. Um, in usually in the drop down menu or it's like in the about section at youtube or if you follow me on social media on instagram which i'll link here um you can dm me there and i will give you the information but i don't really want to put it out here because as i said it is kind of more of a private mouth word of mouth type of situation um but i hope you guys enjoyed today's video and uh, please give me a like and subscribe if you haven't and i will see you in my next